There we go, that's what we want. When you're building where I should put my All right, good morning guys. Today, we are integrating the Stripe webhook with my backend, which means users can purchase something. It's going to then trigger some actions to occur on my backend, which will then do a few nifty little things to that user, give them access to a couple of little things, which is really nice. That's what I'm working on today. I've got my Notion board here, which has a couple of tasks I just jotted down in the progress column. I'm gonna start with connecting that webhook up. Makes the most sense, probably the most logical thing to start with on Stripe. We're gonna use Stripe Connect for a marketplace type build, and we're gonna get going. First of all though, need some coffee. Replace that. So today we're running Nest.js on the back end with TypeScript. We've got PostgreSQL for the database and we've also got Prisma for all our queries. For the front end, we've got Next.js with TypeScript, Tailwind and Shad CN UI library. So that's what we're rolling with and obviously Stripe. Nice. All right. Let's crack into it. I saw something on Instagram, or maybe it was YouTube Shorts, like literally an hour ago, and it was someone in tech talking about just like overwhelm in projects. It is, it's a very, very evident thing. I see it everywhere, I even see it in myself. When you're building a project, and you're building something really cool and you're really excited about it, and it's really exciting for like at least the first 24 to 48 hours, and then there's like this hump you have to get over where not only do you feel like overwhelmed because there's just so much that you need to do, uh, but also you just need to like stay motivated to build it. Right now, I've got like a decent hump of stuff that I need to get done and there's almost like this mental overload. But one of the cool things that this guy said in this video was just break it down into small chunks. Like every big problem is just a lot of small problems chunked together. It's so true. In everything you do, in development, and like almost all places in life, if you just break large problems down into small chunks, things get easier. So that's what we're doing today. We're breaking it down into a small chunk and today the only small chunk that I'm focusing on is a successful subscription going through there's some automation from the stripe side hitting my webhook on the back end and then doing some logic that's kind of all we're doing all right let's crack into it Crazy. There we go, that's what we want. How to use webhooks with Connect to be notified of Stripe activity. Exactly what we want. And we want it to specifically tell us the user that's doing it, the person that used their ID as well. Give us some data, help us make some decisions on the back end automatically, and then we can move forward. Look at this. There's a few types of webhooks. Account webhooks are for activity on your own account. Most requests made using API keys, without a cool. Connect webhooks are for activity on any connected account. All events on the connected account are sent to the connect webhooks. This includes the most important account updated event for any connected account and direct charges. Great, this is, this is really, really good. This is one of the problems with Stripe as well. It's really good, but really expensive. Like when you calculate all the fees in the end, you get the international currency conversion, you get a credit card fee, you get payout fees, you get all sorts of random other things that Stripe can charge you for. It can end up being like 9%, which is just absolutely insane. Like where is the margin to do anything with that? But at the same time, if you've got like a predominantly like US or UK or almost tier one user going through the flow, the fees aren't as bad but it's still just like wild. There's no alternative. There's products such as like Lemon Squeezy. They're trying to combat this essentially. They're trying to make it super easy. They act as a merchant of record. 
So for your taxes, that's super easy. Stripe doesn't do that. Uh, but the only problem with someone like Lemon Squeezy is they're not really good on the marketplace type model for the subscription side. Why is no one else taken on that challenge and really going, yeah, I'm gonna do that. There's honestly an opportunity right there for someone to raise like $100 million and build that. Anyway, <laughs> if this doesn't work, I'll do that, okay? So one thing you gotta consider when you're building payment systems, especially with Stripe, is the way that, for example, subscriptions work is not the way that you would logically think it works. You might think just from an outside perspective that it's like, okay, I'm just gonna call an API that creates a subscription of like $7 a month or something like that. And it's just gonna return me an object with an ID parameter and a few other params. Stripe is not like that. Stripe first want you to obviously have the user account ID who's gonna create it. That's standard, that's fine. The first thing really is you need to create a product. The product is maybe it's like silver plan, gold plan, member plan, access plan, membership, whatever it's called. And you've got to create that product first and then underneath that product you can have multiple different prices which are another individual entity within Stripe. So what I'm thinking and what I've just been planning out now is when a user is going to create a new price they need to actually create the product at the same time. And that's gonna make things really easy for the user experience. I don't want them to have to go first do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. I just want it to be like $7 a month, it's called membership, submit, boom. And then it just like creates it, we add it to my back end. it's saved, it's beautiful, and it appears on the user's UX. That's kind of all I want. So yeah, that's the plan. Otherwise, integration's been going well. We've got payment onboarding, we've got bank accounts, we've got identity verification, KYC, all of the above. So that's all looking really, really good. So far, it's been a pretty productive day. It's a rainy Saturday here in West Village. It's actually pouring out. I saw some Storm Patrol, New York City emergency response guys outside just before. So uh, yeah, great day to be on indoors and coding. Hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you're enjoying the video. And there's also something I don't normally ask people to do and that's like the video. Can we just do an experiment right now? Like the video and let's see if it outperforms. I would be really interested to see if the algorithm listens to likes anymore in videos. I know back in the day, Graham Stephan, the finance YouTuber guy, he was really pushing for people to like and like smash the like button. People did that for like a few years, but I want to see if it's coming back. So let's try it out. Give the video a like. We'll find out. Bit of a mixer event going on this morning here at this office. So uh, yeah, I think I'm meant to be being social, not just finding a desk. So better go make some coffee and be social. <laughs> Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We've got to pause the video for one second to talk about our sponsor today, MacPaw. We've got our new uh, hybrid setup here. I don't know if you guys have heard of Clean My Mac, but Clean My Mac is one of the sickest apps that you can use for optimization of space, speed, everything when it comes to your Mac computer. Let me show you how it works. If you're anything like me, you run a lot of code on your computer, you empty your trash often, you keep things nicely organized, and as you can see, my trash is empty down the bottom. But that does not mean there aren't rogue rats random large files sitting around cluttering up your space on your computer and making your device slower. So this is something that you can do regularly. We're gonna open it up and we're gonna go scan. Check this out. It's gonna find a whole lot of junk. Okay, you can see there's nothing security wise to worry about and three speed tasks. We're gonna go run. We're gonna close all these just to make sure it cleans everything. And look at this, absolutely crystal clear, cleaning our computer 
I'm not even just saying this, I've actually used Clean My Mac on all my Mac devices for years. Keep my computer fast, keep it clean, just to keep it nice and decluttered. I recommend you guys do it too. And something that I like to do is do like a daily or a, at least a weekly continuous clean using Clean My Mac. It's just a great way to keep your Mac in shape. Got some links down in the description below that you can click on. You can get some discounts, you can get some deals that they've got going on there for Clean My Mac. And go check them out. Thanks Clean My Mac for sponsoring the video. Back to the vlog. Okay, so I have a issue that I'm up against right now. This is not a technical issue. This is not anything to do with actually the like app I'm building and the process of building it. It's actually to do with where I should put my focus. The creative side of YouTube and just like documenting everything I'm doing, coding wise, and just building projects on the side, I'm always gonna do. It's just whether or not I am building these projects for someone else or I'm building them for myself. That's literally the only thing I'm trying to figure out right now. I know lots of you have been wondering kind of what's going on over the past few months and I haven't been clear it's because I can't really be clear right now everything's fine don't worry uh, it's just there are some changes being made and we're just figuring them out as we go so yeah otherwise I'm gonna kick off the day with some dirty coffee as we've got right here we're gonna make some code contributions we're gonna push them up to the cloud and we're just gonna keep productive hope you're having a great day I hope you've enjoyed the video so far and otherwise we are going to crack on let's go The thing about New York is that they pull up the road every second day. I swear, they're replacing the road all the time. They just rip it up. Look at this. There's no road. <laughs> I don't know why, they've done this area like four times since I've been here. Crazy. Whiskey. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, Lafroy Talisker. <coughs> Do you want the box with it? Uh, yeah, sure. Have a good one. Hey, him. Timmy, get your stick. Wow, what's that? Hey. <laughs> 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 it is smoking. 